Jonathan, the North Koreans have been engaged in an effort to acquire nuclear weapons for a long, long time. What do we know about the advance that they made with this particular nuclear test? Based on what we know, Richard, so far, uh, that it, it is an advance, perhaps a significant advance. Mm -hmm. The North Koreans, of course, are claiming that it is a much more lightweight weapon, mm -hmm. but with enhanced explosive yield. In fact, as we do the nuclear forensics here to the degree that we can, it appears as if now uh, that the explosive yield was higher than what mm -hmm. was first thought. So uh, in my view, there is no question but that this is a significant advance. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it doesn't give them a fully realized capability, but it reflects, I think, a persistent, deliberate uh, process mm -hmm. uh, and that they are learning as they go. What uh, do we not yet know and what presumably are the CIA and other friendly intelligence services trying to determine in the days and weeks ahead? The most important thing would be whether or not there are emissions of specific gases mm -hmm. They are called noble gases. Don't ask me where that name comes from. Mm -hmm. But that this would tell us a lot about the composition of the fissile material mm -hmm. that contributed uh, to this latest test. Because unless we have some of those emissions, uh, we really are not in a position to judge the precise kind of material that was used for the test. Uh, now, the problem is that North Korea on the second test very successfully obscured uh, whatever the whatever the, any leakage, if you will, of these materials. So you know our aircraft are out there sniffing, literally. Uh, and uh, unless there was leakage this time, we will still have a big question mark about the actual uh, character of the test. Uh, of course, it's quite possible that the North Koreans in their own way might, might actually disclose some of that information. But, but right now, that to me would be the most important indication. My understanding is that there was n there, uh, the Russians and others are reporting no radiation leakage as such. Mm -hmm. But this is something somewhat different. Um, North Korea up till now has used plutonium mm -hmm. as its fissile material. Mm -hmm. uh, but it has also had a parallel program to... Uh, get uh, highly enriched uranium as an alternative. Uh, if this proves to be an uranium test, what's the significance of that in, for the long term? The significance of that would be that North Korea has a means to enrich nuclear fuel uh, for which we have no way to measure the extent and, uh, and, and character of it. Um, uh, plutonium uh, reprocessing of plutonium gives off characteristic chemical signatures, as they are called. Their plutonium reactor, of course, uh, has been uh, has been shut down now since 2007. Mm -hmm. So, if they have this alternative source of production, uh, that in theory could give them a much more open-ended capability mm -hmm. to produce the necessary material needed for nuclear weapons tests. The difference, of course, with plutonium is that when the reactor was fully running, maximally, depending on the design of the weapon, you could basically produce enough, enough um, uh, fissile material for one, uh, to one additional nuclear weapon mm -hmm. per year, whereas with enrichment, uh, in theory at least, it could be much more extensive. And my understanding is that uh, we know where the plutonium was produced when it was produced. We know of only one uranium enrichment facility, which is co-located with the reprocessing unit. But the assumption is that there are probably other sites around North Korea that are doing enrichment as well. And uh, so we have very little idea of, of the scale of the operation at this point. That's absolutely correct. Uh, the the presumption of most scientists who have looked at this is that it is simply not conceivable that uh, when uh, North Korea did in late 2010 reveal the existence of this enrichment facility that that's the only one that they had. Um, I, my, it's my understanding that there are a variety of locations that we suspect may be the location of this, but the problem is, is that there's no way in terms of um, 
uh, energy usage, because actually enrichment requires very little electricity for the operation of these cascades. Uh, there's simply no way to know exactly where these things are or how much they are producing uh, and whether those capacities can be aggregated in some sense. Now you, you use the magic word capability and um, if one takes the, the advances in the ballistic missile program and the advances in the nuclear program, what at this point, if any place, can North Korea hit? Uh, delivering a nuclear weapon on a ballistic missile? This is the operative question, or one of the operative questions, and I think people need to uh, be careful about what they say. There are some who believe that uh, the latest missile test gives them a missile with a hypothetical range of up to 10,000 kilometers so that it could reach targets uh, uh, in the United States. I'm a little more skeptical of that. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't dismiss the technical accomplishment, but this is the first time that they were able to successfully test such a missile, and the missile that was tested did not have remotely that range. Mm -hmm. The question that many are asking, however, is whether other kinds of ongoing developments in their missile program, and particularly the development of a mobile missile, mm -hmm. which many in the intelligence community in the Department of Defense believe is really the longer term goal, something that would be harder to detect mm -hmm. and would be the primary basis, assuming they can get there, of putting a miniature, miniaturized warhead on a missile that could reach the United States. But we don't know because this is a missile that has never been tested. Mm -hmm. And uh, it would be an extraordinary roll of the dice, to say the least, for North Korea if it were to, in effect, uh, deploy such a missile without ever having tried to test it, mm -hmm. quite apart from the very, very real problems of being able to have a warhead that is not so heavy that you could fit it atop a missile and then have the means of ensuring that you have a, um, a heat shield yes. so that it, uh, as it passes out and back into the atmosphere, uh, it survives intact. Mm -hmm. So in a way, I think it's a, there's a risk that we may give them more credit than they possibly deserve at this point, but I think that that simply reflects the, what are clearly, in my view, the incredible demands and the demanding nature of what they have to undertake, recognizing that they don't test all that often so we should be watching for whether they accelerate the pace of this testing, uh, whether they follow up with additional activities. I would not at all preclude that. In fact, they've in effect half promised that they will be doing more. But the shortcomings here may be ones that are related to finance, relevant materials, relevant uh, items that need to be utilized. Uh, in, in a rocket test and so forth, uh, and this is not easily done. It, it, so uh, all of these are critical questions. Um, uh, Richard, if I could pose a, a question to you, I mean, the, the, the issue now, it's, it's quite interesting that in South Korea, for example, there's been almost kind of a ho-hum reaction to this. I mean, I think there's much more agitation here than there, certainly was the case with the missile test as well. Um, is it, would a worry be that the sentiment in South Korea or elsewhere just regards this as more of the same with not any particular strategic consequences and therefore not warranting a bigger response from the international community? Now, I'm not saying, I'm, I'm asking your view about whether you think that there is a risk of that and what governments therefore have to do to make sure that we don't treat this as business as usual. Um, well, it's an interesting question. I think the alarm was probably greater in Japan than it was in South Korea. Um, uh, uh, there was virtually no coverage of this in the United States because of the story from California and the State of the Union. Um, so we're a, a bit asleep at the switch. But I think that if one looks at um, national security planners, uh, this is an item of great concern. Um, it, it seems that North Korea, if it can hit any targets uh, with nuclear weapons, they are within the, the East Asian region. Mm -hmm. um, and um, the South Korean public may be 
um, having a ho-hum attitude about this. Uh, I'm sure people in the Ministry of Defense and, and other parts of the um, South Korean government are, are uh, worried as well. Um, one specific point of worry is what is the United States willing to commit to uh, to fulfill our defense obligations both to South Korea and Japan? Uh, traditionally, we have been prepared to say uh, to both the government in Seoul and the government in Tokyo that uh, if those countries are attacked by North Korea, we will include nuclear weapons ourselves as the means of defense. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it is no accident that yesterday, in the wake of this test, um, President Obama, in talking with South Korea's president, Secretary Kerry, talking with his Japanese counterpart, used the words extended deterrence, uh, including uh, under the nuclear umbrella, mm -hmm. uh, essentially reiterating the um, um, willingness of the United States uh, to defend our allies with extreme measures as necessary. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's interesting in that regard that there have been statements emanating from both South Korea and Japan that, uh, at a governmental level, uh, that uh, in the event of uh, evidence that North Korea was preparing for an attack, uh, they would be prepared in their own defense to undertake potentially preemptive actions. Now, that may be more intended as a warning to North Korea rather than something that is an actualized capability. But to me, it, it, it underscores that the nature of the stakes here are, are increasing. Interestingly enough, though, I think that the public perceptions, by and large, seem to be lagging behind what are concerns not only in the Japanese uh, and South Korean governments, but also in the American government. I mean, there is really a feeling that these latest developments, both the successful missile test uh, and now the nuclear test, the third nuclear test, should be a wake-up call, a true wake-up call, uh, that we, we, we can't assume that North Korea will not be able to achieve certain capabilities, uh, and the fact that they may not be fully realized at present is not a reason to uh, ignore in any sense at all what they have been able to achieve and might next be intending to, to pursue. I mean, it strikes me that the other big unknown in all of this is what will China do? Uh, China has taken a somewhat tolerant and indulgent attitude towards North Korea over the last uh, three years. Uh, it appears that it, um, uh, is um, fairly angry that North Korea went ahead without uh, giving much heed to Chinese um, uh, encouragement not to test. Um, I'm sure that the Obama administration and South Korea and Japan are hoping that uh, uh, China's new leadership uh, will be energized uh, to take firmer measures um, to, in effect, punish North Korea for um, this action. Mm -hmm. I, I think that China is indeed the, the, the critical factor here. Uh, you, your characterization, I think, of China's general attitude toward this is, is entirely uh, accurate. Uh, the Chinese have been very frustrated, obviously, uh, and, and angered in the past when North Korea has undertaken uh, tests that clearly undermine Chinese interests. Uh, the, 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 the problem now for China is that given that North Korea has yet again tested, and given that North Korea even says that it may test more, these would be central indications to me of the fact that China's preferred policy it does not work, is not working. Now, again, it's not that China's policies alone here have failed. I mean, this is a, a collective failure, but the reality is this. China is now disproportionately North Korea's major trading partner. Maybe about 90% of North Korea's trade is with China. They're a source of investment. They're a source of energy. They're a source of food, consumer goods, extraordinary dependence on China, at least at an economic level, which you would think intuitively would give them a means of influencing North Korean behavior if they so chose. So. For China right now, there, there, there are two factors. Number one, 
And this is, of course, critically related to the fact that we have a new leader in China, Xi Jinping. Uh, number one, do the Chinese indicate uh, by their actions and statements a readiness to work much more unequivocally mm -hmm. uh, with the U.S., Japan, and South Korea than in the past? Uh, and number two, do they undertake specific actions, more of a unilateral mm -hmm. sort, that would restrict some of their aid to North Korea, uh, would downgrade the political importance they attach to, if you will, protecting their relationship with North Korea. We'll know. These will be clear indications of whether or not uh, North Korea has simply gone beyond the pale in the estimation of China's leaders and whether the Chinese leaders really decide that now is the time to act in a more purposive, purposive fashion. In all of this, I don't expect China to discard North Korea. You know, there's an awful lot of binary thinking here that seems to me really misses the point. But the question is whether China can underscore to young Mr. Kim that it's his behavior is unacceptable, that it endangers vital Chinese interests, and that the Chinese will protect their own interests here, which of necessity will require them to, I think, inhibit some of what they do with North Korea in the hopes that North Korea in coming weeks and months will think about this much more carefully as it weighs its own interests and actions. And I think from the point of view of the United States, it is not necessary that China do these things in a very public and obtrusive way. Uh, many of the steps that they can take with respect to investment and so on, uh, treatment of North Korean refugees, um, enforcement of existing and new sanctions, uh, can be done in ways that uh, effectively get the message to North Korea uh, without advertising it to the world and actually giving young Mr. Kim a, a somewhat face-saving way out of the course of action on which he's uh, embarked. Right. I agree with you absolutely. I think that there's an American tendency to want to see things that are very visible, very explicit, but I think Chinese style, diplomatically and otherwise here, exactly. is much more measured. Uh, they, 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 they can do things that North Korea will undoubtedly notice mm -hmm. and will get the job done. Yes. Uh, and will we be able to recognize that China is not being passive? That's, that, frankly, is really one of the tests for, for Xi Jinping. Well, I'm sure this story is not over. We sh will probably be back together talking about this uh, in fairly short order. It's steady work.